The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Welcome everyone to the Habits of Health Zoom and podcast. We are so glad that you are sharing your Wednesday evening with us tonight and or maybe you're watching in playback. We have several playback options. We have the Habits of Health YouTube channel and also podcast options. So welcome, welcome. Go ahead if you're on live, put in the chat where you are watching from. We love that this is a nationwide webinar and we get so many participants from all over. And also joining us, we have people who are clients of the Optavia program. We have Optavia coaches. We have health professionals. We also have people who are just checking us out and saying, what is this awesome program that is Optavia? So no matter who you are, uh, welcome tonight. And also keep in mind that in this webinar tonight, we might give tips that apply to somebody who's doing our 5-in-1 program or our 4-2-in-1 or one of our uh, optimization programs. There's all kinds of different programs in Optavia, but no matter which phase you're in, we're glad that you're here and you're working on your healthy body and healthy mind. So Let's see, I see people from Florida, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Colorado Springs, San Diego, Utah, Highland, Utah, that's just about 20 miles from me. So welcome everybody. So tonight we have an awesome topic of what do I do if I get on a plateau? And to introduce our topic, um, I'm gonna bring on Stephanie Whiting, who is a certified Optavia coach and global director, to um, kick us off. Steph, are you there? I'm here, Amber. Thank you. I'm so excited to talk about this topic tonight because it is near and dear to my heart. I think we've all had that time when we've hit a plateau, and it's like, now what, right? So first of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, that picture you see on the left is the one you take and you vow that you're never going to show anyone. And it somehow ends up on a national <laughs> training call. But that's what I get for posting it to my Facebook page. Don't you love it when that happens? <laughs> um, this picture I actually posted a few days ago. And... The reason I did is because it was the 4th of July and I brought a whole bunch of bathing suits on my vacation and I remember uh, waking up on the 4th of July and just kind of looking through them and thinking which one of these looks fun and which one of these looks like 4th of July and I put it on and I thought gosh I never thought I'd be the girl that was picking out a suit based on my mood and not based off of you know which one fits because it's the only one that fits. So this was pretty a pretty cool breakthrough for me to just pick this out based off of my mood and the holiday. Um, but yeah, that girl on the left, 40 pounds heavier, and you know, just not in a great place, didn't really know what to do. And the girl on the right is just living life, and I've been in optimization for about a year and a half now, and just feeling awesome. So thanks so much, Amber, for having me. Absolutely. Well, one of the things that, um, that I love about this topic is sometimes it has to do with your body and sometimes it has to do with your mind. And so the first question that we want to ask is, am I even on a plateau? So it's one of those questions like, what is a plateau? And so we just wanted to talk a little bit about that because there's so many times where we were going, okay, we want, we're getting on the scale like every single day or some people are like getting on it every minute and they're going, wait, I, I just, 
I ate my chicken and broccoli and the scale didn't even go down yet. Right? <laughs> That's not exactly how it works, right, Steph? Right. It's like I ate one whole day compliant and the scale hasn't budged. You know, why has it, why haven't I lost weight after one day? It's so true. So the first question to ask yourself is, am I, am I really on a plateau at all? And how we like to define it is that you have been true to your program, whichever one you're doing, for a good consecutive amount. I mean, it's not like that it's some like definition for sure of how many days, but I'll tell you what, it's not one day because <laughs> our bodies just don't work like that. So I usually tell my clients, you know, like a good week or even two that you have been 100% compliant and your scale's just not budging. So that's one kind of way to look at a plateau. But the other side of it is sometimes I'll have a client who will be like, hey, I'm on a plateau. And really what that means was I actually have not been sticking to my program at all. Have you ever encountered that one, Steph? <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. Like you're kind of telling yourself you're on a plateau, but you're not counting all the little things you're sticking in your mouth in between your feelings, you know? Um, and it's an easy thing to say because it makes us feel better, but we're maybe not being a hundred percent true to ourselves when we say the word plateau. And it also could be that we weighed ourselves, you know, three days before and we haven't lost. So you're, I love that you're defining what a plateau actually means because for a lot of people, you know, it gets so fun because you get on program and they step on the scale every day and they're down a pound like every day. And the day they step on the scale and they haven't lost a pound, suddenly they feel like they're stuck, which really isn't the case. Absolutely. So that's the first thing to look at is, am I really on a plateau or am I just getting frustrated because my scale isn't following the mental, you know, voodoo that I'm sending it that I want to see. <laughs> so we're going to talk about both sides of that, whether, you know, you feel like you're doing everything right and it's just not, you think you're not getting the success that you really want to see or the results that you should be seeing. And the other side of that is what can I work on with my mindset so that I'm being more compliant? Okay, so fueling. You know, fueling is so important. And this is something that we do. We have a tip call that we do with our clients about one week into program. And we like to ask a few questions because sometimes we make assumptions that we're doing things right or um, we think we are, but we're really not. So, you know, a few questions to ask yourself are, am I eating within an hour of waking up? Um, that's so important. Old me used to wait until like 11 or 12 o'clock in the afternoon before I eat. And I truly wasn't hungry. But once I got on plan and my body was used to eating six times a day, I would wake up and I would be hungry. Um, are you eating every two to three hours? Now, if you're eating, you know, right at the four hour mark on every fueling, you're not going to be able to get all your fuelings in and that can make a big difference. And then skipping fuelings. I know that uh, for me, this was never a problem. Amber, we talked about this earlier. It never even occurred to me because I was so excited to eat every time it was time to fuel. But I have had clients say, I'm just eating four because I wanted to speed things up a little bit. So it is so important to get all five. We want your body to trust you and get exactly what it needs. So it feels comfortable dropping that weight and it needs all five fuelings. That's not going to speed up your results to eat just four. That's such a good point, Steph. It's your body needs all that nutrition. And these programs are put together specifically by our food scientists and the nutritionists and dietitians with Optavia and they are just balanced exactly the way that they should be. So changing your program will change your results when it comes down to it. Those are such good reminders. So here's the second thing to look at, water. Now, how many times do we say, oh, I'm just drinking so much water. I'm just floating away down the river. But are you really tracking? your water or are you just guessing are you just 
thinking, well, I, I drank some or, and you got your water bottle here, but you can't even remember how many times you filled it up. So I would say one of the best things you can do is actually track those ounces and report that into your coach. Because, you know, the minimum we want to get is that 64 ounces. Are you really getting that? Or are you just going, I'm just floating away down the river, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And I definitely notice the weeks that I do better drinking my water, the scale moves a little bit more those weeks. And it's kind of annoying sometimes. You have to know where all the bathrooms are, everywhere you go. But it is definitely a huge part of your program and it makes you full. The water keeps you full and satisfied. So I love that. And it's so true. It's just like everything seems to work better in your body when it's hydrated. And it's especially good to think about that. I mean, during the summer, right now, when we recorded this, it's July 11th. And it's the hottest, that's pretty much the hottest month um, where I live. But being sure that your body isn't getting dehydrated is so important for your overall health and keep that scale moving in the right direction. Absolutely. So here's a couple of things that you might not be thinking about. Um, sleep and stress. Now these are two things I didn't even put into the equation of my health before I started my health journey. And it turns out when your body's not getting adequate sleep, you might find you've done everything right as far as your feelings, your lean and green, your water. And then, you know, if you're finding you're not dropping or you're having a problem with plateauing, you might want to look at sleep and stress. Um, getting adequate rest is a big deal. And even how are you sleeping during the night? Are you waking up all night? Um, so kind of tracking that. And then your stress levels. Um, you might find that at different times in your life when you're super stressed out, your body can hold on to weight. So this is a great time to start to examine ways to de-stress, like going for a walk, listening to music, um, maybe even writing down things in a gratitude journal. There's so many things we can do to kind of work on our healthy mind that will actually help our body release that weight. I love that stuff. And um, I love somebody in the uh, chat pointed this out. This is why I love when people are on live because it's so fun to just have like collaboration. And they said that sometimes when you're getting a craving for something, really that means your body is thirsty. And so getting that big glass of water and, and drinking that when you have that craving. And I think that cravings are also very tied to the, this topic, the sleep and stress is sometimes we have these habit loops that um, we've had for a long time that we get into when we're, we're maybe in a stressful situation or um, something that triggers, triggers us emotionally. And so there's two sides of that. There's the, if you are having this distress in your life that you have these cortisol responses, which kind of makes your body go, you know, and, and it, it kind of like doesn't want to release some of that fat. It says, hey, there is something wrong going on. There might be a war or a saber tooth tiger or a famine coming off the body. Hold on to all that fat and make sure we store it for the winter because we need to hunker down and make sure that you stay alive, right? <laughs> That's a thing. That is definitely a thing. And it's you know, it's so powerful The when I went on plan, I had never had like eating times before. And when I set up eating times for myself, it was so interesting to me how maybe one of my eating times was noon and something stressful happened at one and I was so hungry and it was so real. And I would think in my mind, did I drink my water? Okay. I actually didn't drink my water. I drink my water. Suddenly I wasn't hungry anymore, but it felt just like hunger just knowing when you ate your last fueling and whether you drank your water can help you understand whether it's an emotional hunger or a physical hunger. I love that. And, you know, and if it is that emotional hunger, then really taking some time to de-stress, taking some deep cleansing breaths, listening to those thoughts, because it's not necessarily going to go away right away, but you can say, hey, that's just a thought. I am not my thoughts. I decide what I want to do and I do it. 
And because a lot of times people think if I have a thought that I want a soda or whatever, <laughs> someone just typed Diet Coke in the, in the right, chat. I <laughs> if someone says, I have a thought and I, need, and I need a Diet Coke, then that doesn't mean you actually have to go get it. Like, I know that sounds like duh, but seriously, there are so many times where we think if I think it, it's 100% true and I have to do it. Absolutely. And bringing up our slideshow again. So hitting that reset button, you know, that's just like our phones, right? <laughs> when your phone's wigging out and it won't do anything, you got to reset it. Same with our bodies. So, oh, this is a huge one that I love is, are you watching your extras? Like your condiments? Are you keeping track? Did you know that you, even with our five in one plan, you can have up to three condiments per day. And a lot of times the condiments are just little things. It's like, you know, a tablespoon of milk in your coffee, or it's, you know, a half a teaspoon of this or that uh, herb or spice or something like that. And sometimes we don't really pay attention to things like that. And we think, oh, well, it's just, you know, a tiny bit of this or that. And you end up getting a lot more. And those carbohydrates, they do end up adding up, especially if you're on a plateau. And so some people, you know, maybe they don't watch their condiments 100%. They do great, and they're just sailing through. But if you find yourself, you know, maybe not getting the results you want, this is a good place to look. Um, and, yeah, if you're getting coffee, I mean, boy, it's one of those, yeah. <laughs> one of those mermaid uh, cup drinks, you know, it's, it definitely can throw you right off. <laughs> right. And, you know, I find a, a few just weird things will get people like I had a client that wasn't losing and being compliant. And we really went through everything she was eating and drinking, finding out that she was taking fiber at night. And the fiber had quite a bit of carbs. And she was taking like a triple serving of fiber because she just always had. So she was actually eating about 44 carbs right before bed. Um, I've also had clients who are gum chewers. Have you guys noticed the stick of gum has two carbohydrates? If you're a nervous gum chewer, you could actually get 30 carbohydrates if you ate a pack of gum. So, I mean, just little things you might not think of can really add up. That is such a good point, Steph. And that this is why when, if you are finding yourself on a plateau, it's a good idea to journal. And we call it the BLT journal. Anything you bite, lick, or taste. Because how many times do we just like, you know, making something and you're tasting this and you're, you know, it's so easy because, you know, we mindlessly have these habits. And that's what Dr. A talks about is uh, the habits of health. So such a good point to make sure that you are tracking exactly what you put in your mouth. Okay, so let's go on to our next topic. Oh, and you can ask your health coach for the condiment and fat PDF that they can send to you if you're wanting to know like the exact measurements of this or that. Um, very helpful PDF. So yes, the BLT Bite Lick Taste journal. So our next point is, are you paying attention to your lean and green? And to Steph's point earlier, are you eating enough food? So it's not always that you're going over. Sometimes you are not getting the nutrition that you need. All right. Sorry, we had some feedback. Um, so the lean and green just to review, bust open that Optivia guide that came with your fuelings on your first order, and just review the amount. So five to seven ounces of protein, depending on how much you choose. If it's the leanest, like tilapia, you get seven ounces. If it's leaner, like chicken, six ounces, or lean, like salmon or steak, you get five ounces. And always remember that your fat serving needs to match your protein. This is so important. A lot of times people think of the fat serving, they think it's optional, like condiments, but it's not. Your fat serving is something that your body needs. Absolutely, it needs it. it needs a certain amount of fat. 
And so make sure that if you're choosing that tilapia, two fat servings, chicken, one, salmon, or steak, you don't need any extra um, fat. And then three servings of vegetables. I cannot even tell you how many times that um, my clients will be not getting enough vegetables. It is so important, you guys, make sure that you're not skimping on your veggies. Your body needs that fiber. Your body needs that, uh, that nutrition, those vitamins, those good, fresh foods. So, um, you know, if you've been eyeballing it a while, maybe take out those measuring cups and see if you are on track. Perfect. That's so true. Amber, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I find that clients have a hard time sometimes with veggies and protein. They're either not getting enough, they're not getting their healthy fat, or they're not eating enough veggies. So those are great things to check. Okay, activity. So, you know, with our activity, it's so important to find a happy place. You know, when I started the program, I was an over-exerciser. I thought that I could exercise as much as I wanted, and then I could kind of eat whatever I wanted, and it turns out that wasn't really true. Um, I'm so happy that I found that I could get to my happy, healthy weight through nutrition, but I also love exercise, and I love activity, and so... Being active is very important, but it's also great to find that happy place where we're not gonna out eat. Like let's say you are on the five in one. Um, we don't wanna out eat the five in one because it creates what, I always use this word with my clients, I say a hunger monster. You guys ever worked out so hard that you're just like done it, done it, and you're just walking around your kitchen, what can I eat? I have to eat something fast. Um, so the hunger monster is real. Um, Find a happy place in the middle that you can stay compliant to the program you're on without creating too much hunger. And then exercise just becomes a joy. I love that when I came to Optavia, I changed um, my mindset from exercise being something that gets me something to something that gives me something. It used to be like if I exercised, I got weight loss. And now I exercise with no expectations, just for joy, heart health, and to make me feel good. I love that stuff. And um, isn't it funny how sometimes we set up rewards for ourselves in like crazy ways? Like, has anybody ever done the thing where you go, boy, I exercised and I did this and I did so well today. And so I'm going to reward myself by eating a banana split <laughs> or something along those lines. And I, I kind of compare it to, it's like if you're rewarding yourself with something that's the exact opposite of the good thing you did, it really doesn't make any sense. It's like if I was helping my neighbor, my neighbor's just moved in, and I was helping him move in boxes, and, and you know, I was bringing him dinner, and, and then I was like, I go home, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? Look at me. I did great. I was helping my neighbor. I was serving somebody. To reward myself, I'm going to go punch my neighbor in the face and like throw all their clothes out of their house and like throw some dirt on their floor. It's, that doesn't make any sense. If you reward yourself for a good thing you did with the opposite of what the good thing was, it really makes zero sense. Right, but that's the mindset that we used to live in sometimes. You know, always exercise with the food reward. So it's no wonder we were in the place we were in um, and feeling crazy, right? It makes you feel crazy. I don't want to help my neighbor and then punch my neighbor in, a, in the face. That would make me feel like I was a crazy person. <laughs> so. Oh, I know. It's so true. And sometimes we are crazy people, right? It's like, why does that make sense to me to reward myself for a good workout with banana sweat? Totally opposite. <laughs> so here's another point to consider if you're not getting the results that you really think you should be getting, are you plugging into your support system? First off, are you communicating with your coach? You know, we, in Optavia, we all get this awesome free certified Optavia coach. Like we get that person who's on the journey with us. They're not, 
just so you know, just because we're coaches does not mean that we're perfect. It doesn't mean we know everything. It really only means that we are willing to link arms with you and say, let's do this together. So are you checking in with your coach? Are you on these webinars every week? And if you're not on live, I get it. Sometimes you have stuff that comes up, but we have the YouTube playbacks. We have the podcast. How easy it is, is it? to plug in a webinar or a podcast while you're on the treadmill or, or folding laundry or driving to work. It's just so important to be plugging into all the different components of our program. And one thing that I can say personally is becoming an Optic Via coach was huge for me in being able to um, really stay on track. To it, It's funny. It's like, it's like leveling up. You know, if you are an Optivia client, I mean, it's great. You have all these resources. You have all these um, things at your disposal to use. But when you're a coach, it like levels it up for you. You have so many more resources. You have so much more support. And you're part of this community. I mean, we have Optivia Convention in St. Louis next week. I'm so excited. I'm leaving on Tuesday. Like, if you... If you could get yourself there, even if you're a client or a coach, because everyone's invited, I recommend it highly. Yeah, you know, coaching is taking the next step, absolutely, because it's really interesting on our journeys. And, you know, as far as plateauing goes, we can kind of get in a groove where we feel like we know everything. And then we can get a little bit lazy with our habits. But when we're coaching someone and we tell them, hey, have you drank this much water? Are you measuring how much water you've been drinking? You kind of can look back at your own day and go, wait a second, I stopped tracking my water. You know, like you're always thinking when you're telling someone something, am I actually doing that too? And it really, it's a thing. It really helps you. It's so true. And this is another thing that I love is um, to just really be conscious of why, why am I really doing this? And this goes back to the mindset that Steph and I talked about at the beginning that, um, you know, sometimes we're on a plateau because we're just not sticking to our program. And so it helps. I know it helps me. Like when I'm doing a cleanup and I'm going to, you know, after a vacation or something like, oh, I just need to like do a little cleanup. I journal my why. I'm like, why? I get super clear. Why am I doing this? Why do I want to stay on top of my health? Why do I? Because I only give myself like a five pound window in my optimization phase. I'm always trying to get better, but I have to monitor as well and make sure that I'm not going past where I feel comfortable and where I feel my best and have my best energy. And I have to write that why, and I read it every single time I eat, six times a day, every single time. I'm feeding that, that good energy, that those reasons into my brain every time that I'm eating. Absolutely, Amber. And I learned that from you, actually. You said every time you eat your lean and green, um, pull out your whys and reread them. And you guys, you'll find so many times your whys have nothing to do with the scale, yet we can get so caught up in what the scale says. So I find for myself sometimes, if I can just step off the scale for a couple of weeks, if it's driving me crazy and I'm being compliant, this is the important part. If you're being compliant, the fun part is the scale is going to go down whether you hop on that scale or not. So if you tell yourself, you know, I can be compliant, but the scale is kind of messing me up right now. Just be 100% and hop on that thing every few weeks. Um, you know, there's so many wins besides just what the scale says. You're, you can check inches. You can, you know, see how your clothes are fitting. Sometimes I've uh, weighed the same for weeks on my journey and, and dropped a pant size while the scale was reading the exact same thing. So there's a lot of different ways to measure success for sure. That's such a good point, Seth. And it. It's so good to measure body fat percentage as well. And sometimes um, you might not have like a body fat percentage machine at your house. I actually bought one on Amazon. I think it was only like a hundred bucks, but it really was helpful for me when I was losing my weight 14 years ago to, to track something other than the scale because our bodies, 
they just sometimes they just do what they want. Like you'll you might be losing inches, you might be losing pounds on the scale, you might be losing body fat percentage. But the thing that I can say is it's so comforting to know that the Optavia plan is is tested. It is you know it's backed by science. It's put together to protect your body. I love that. You don't have to guess. You don't have to be doing some crazy diet. You're doing a health program that is not only giving your body the right nutrition, but also feeding your mindset, giving you the support that you really need to be successful long-term as you plug into all those different areas. Absolutely, Amber. Thanks for mentioning that because... You know, that helped me so much on my journey when the scale wasn't maybe going as fast as I wanted it to. I thought, this is a program I can trust. This is why I have a coach. I would ask my coach, what should I do? And my coach would say, trust the process. And, you know, that got me through. If, if you know the plan is approved and it's been tested by science, it turns out when you follow it, it actually works. It's pretty awesome. You can trust it. Well, thanks so much much everybody for joining us tonight on the habits of health uh, call and we are just so excited for you and for your journey um, share your victories with your coach and in your community and really be that beacon of light for others so they know that they can do this too and because our mission is lifelong transformation one healthy habit at a time we really want that mission to go out through the whole country and then the world so thanks so much for joining us and have a fantastic week. Now we usually have our trilogy presentation, but tonight we are letting you off the hook to go have fun with your summer um, early and you can visit the YouTube channel, the Optavia YouTube channel to get more information about paying it forward and helping other people um, by becoming an Optavia coach. So thank you so much for joining us. See you guys. This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, Please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team.